all my Guanishas out there in Gwinnett land. I know it's Saturday. I know it's I know it's the afternoon, but I'm on a live broadcast right here in Riverdale at the Riverdale Business Alliance, hosted by Miss Barbara Green. She has a group here today, and I'm so happy to be have, uh, that I have a guest here today with me talking. Because I've been talking for a while. I'll be talking next week. You know, I talk. That's what I do. I talk for a living. But I got a great guest here with me today, um, Bishop Marilyn Thomas. Marlon. 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 I messed her name up already. <laughs> Marlon, Bishop Marlon Tom- Thomas. Listen, and she's from EO, baby. Shout out to EO yes, up there. Yes, I know it's cold up there right now. <laughs> it's, it's a little chilly down here, too. But anyway, yeah. thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you um, for having me, Audrey. First of all, I want to say thank you to Pastor Barbara Green. She is one of our podcasters, Ooh, yes. you guys. And um, she has a podcast called Bleeding in the Dark. So if you have not listened to it yet, go to bleedinginthedark.org and check her out. She's giving some wisdom, some pearls, especially to those of you who are leaders. You're leading by light and in the dark you're crying. That's what a podcast say. I didn't say it. She said it. So make sure to go and listen to it and check her out. But right now I have Dr. Marlon Thomas here, and she's going to talk to us about what she's doing. She's also a bishop. She's also a bishop, y'all. She's a lady of God. She did a prayer. Let me tell you something. I was like, listen, I need to find her church. She's in Fayetteville. That's a hike, though. You know what I mean? That's a bit of a hike. I'm going to have to just take a special trip. But thank you so much for joining me at the table. Thank you for having me, Audrey. So she is thinking about starting a podcast, but she has a lot of things that's really near and dear to her heart. And she's going to share with us some of those things. She's the author of Five Keys to Success. To, to, to successful leadership. She's also the founder of Grief You Lose Again. Yes. She has gone through some some horrific things that no mother, no wife want to go through. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to share her story with us. So without further ado, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Um, I just wanted to share, um, as Audrey was saying, um, I am the senior pastor at Lifeline Family Worship Center. Our church is located in Fayetteville, Georgia. So you got to come out and visit with us, 138 Rainbow Way. Um, been pastoring for 17 years. And I was sharing with Audrey earlier that um, one thing God has given me um, alongside of the ministry, he's given me a heart for uh, for those that are hurting. He's given me a heart for helping people to co- to go from pain to purpose. Uh, three years ago, I lost my oldest son. He was tragically killed. Wow. And then um, less than, actually, it is four months. Um, this weekend, four months ago, my uh, my husband passed away suddenly. He he had a heart attack, and he suddenly wow. passed away. And so, so the grief you lose again was me um, determining, making up my mind, you know, and to help others that, you know, we can't change the situation and circumstances that we go through. Grief is a spirit that I always tell people will stifle you, whether you've lost a mother, you've lost a spouse, a child, you know, a, a best friend. Um, grief can stifle so many people and bring on the spirit of depression. Mm-hmm. And so we deal with a lot with... Um, I've been blessed to be able to talk to those in the mental health community, you know, battling depression because grief is one of those things that people are actually dealing with more so than others. And because when, you know, as, as a people, you know, people are transitioning in life, you know, you don't really think about um, grief in the sense of, how long to mourn? Mm-hmm. That's what I was mm-hmm. trying to get to. How long to mourn? You know, and, and most people will tell you, oh, well, they went to heaven or, you know, get over it. And for everybody, it's different depending it, on who that person is. It know? is different. So when, when, you, when you when you talk to people and you've gone through some things that nobody, you know, really want should have to go through, but that's a part of life. When you are ministering to people or you're consulting with people, what are some of the steps you give them to talk to help them get past that because that's painful. Like I, yeah. Kobe died, he wasn't even in my family. I wouldn't even watch TV for like a couple of days because I just yeah. couldn't. I couldn't bear to see it anymore. What do, What do you? What are some of the steps they can do to get past, move past the grief? Let's go through three small steps. I would say, okay. um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in order. But these are three things that I know I've experienced that has helped me in the grief you lose again campaign. And um, and that's the first one is to be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to take an honest assessment about where you are. You know, most people they will either live in denial, you know, about it, and you know we can push it off and speak the word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, for those that are in the faith community, but you have to be honest. You mm-hmm. know that. I'm hurting, Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, you know, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, you know, um, I miss my loved one and, and be okay with however long it takes to stay in that place. Mm -hmm. You can't rush the process. So that would be the first step. Be honest with yourself. The second one, I'm an advocate for therapy. 
Mm-hmm. I believe in um, getting, you know, somebody to come alongside that that's their gift and season to help you through the process of life, whether that's grief, you know, divorce, you know, I mean, they even have debt counseling now, mm-hmm. you know, yes, yes, <laughs> you do. know, you yes, know, so do. surely, you know, you got to get somebody to come alongside and to help you. And then the third thing is surround yourself with, you know, people that want to see you win mm-hmm. the flip side of grief you lose again and if you all could see my t-shirt i have nice. you know it's the boxing gloves on mm-hmm. it you can follow me on facebook at marlon s thomas and um, ig and uh, twitter at bishop marlon thomas and so you'll see a lot of the things that i have posted but i tell people that you know you have to surround yourself with people that want to see you win mm-hmm. that's the key thing mm-hmm. you can't stop grief life happens mm-hmm. to all of us but when you surround yourself around the community of people that that can see a future bigger than where you presently are. They're going to always push you to the win. I'm a basketball mom. My son is a professional athlete, so I've been in basketball all of his life, and I feel like all of my life too, basically. And so, you know, when when you think about winning, a coach has to always gather a mm-hmm. team in a huddle. Mm-hmm. When they get the team in a the huddle, they, they're devising a play, a mm-hmm. strategy, Aud- mm-hmm. Audrey, to win, right. you know. Exactly. And so that's what that team, that's what that community is, that, that you get around you, you know, that they have a strategy to help you to win, to, you know, keep you focused on the ultimate goal. But, you know, sometimes we are such private people yes. that we don't even want people to know that we're struggling. We don't even want people to know that we're in pain because they think that we're going to they're going to be judged. Yeah. What do you say to that person? You know, it's hard because mm-hmm. a, a lot of us feel like that. And and if you um, depending on your status and in your community, status in your church, you know, status in your company, you know, corporate America, it's very hard. But the thing is, you can't get help if you don't ever ask for help. And that's why step one is important, Mm -hmm. you know, just to be, uh, take an honest assessment of your own life. Nobody can help you if we don't know that you need help. And that three, having that community, it doesn't mean you have to have like 50 people around you, right. you know, a mom, a child. When my late husband passed away, he was my best friend. Mm. And so, you know, my younger son now, uh, we had this little joke and that he always says, well, you know, now that, you know, the Lord promoted him, that's what we say. Mm-hmm. The Lord promoted, he said, mom, I'm going to be your, your best friend. Mm-hmm. And I told him, I said, well, you know, you, you know, you're so busy. I said, so we'll just say this. So you don't feel like you have to be committed right. to me for life. I right. said, we'll just call you my this season, best friend. Right. <laughs> right. So, you know, we just have a this season, best friend tag. And I just said that to say that sometimes when, you're going through things. It may not be a girlfriend. It right. may be your child. I'm thankful mm-hmm. that he's an adult now and we can talk about things. It may be a parent, but you have to have somebody. Nobody can stay on an island by themselves right. and expect to win. You That's know, right. you if you're going to win and, and fulfill God's purpose for your life, you've got to have somebody in your corner that's going to cheer you on to the win. That's right. Listen, I ain't said it. Bishop said it. I know y'all hear me say a whole lot of stuff. I didn't say that. She said it. You got to have some cheerleaders in your corner. And that's why we're here today. Barbara is a cheerleader for all of us, yes, y'all. Yes, and y'all can't is. see her, but I'm going to talk about it because she has a heart of gold. And we met in December. And I tell you, she's like one of my friends now. And I'm really blessed to have her in my life. I'm blessed to be here with all of these ladies. Y'all can't see them. I know. I can't. You can't see them. Say hi, ladies. <laughs> You heard it. I'm sorry. We have a gentleman in the house. We always forget the guys. But anyway, listen, you listen to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show, and I know it's good afternoon. I do know that. But it's Saturday. This is a special event. So, um, Bishop, tell people how to reach out to you, how to find you, how to follow you. Okay. Well, you know, um, again, you can come down to Lifeline. I would love to have you as my special guest. Our services are Sundays, 10 o'clock a.m., Wednesday, um, Breakthrough Bible Study, at 7 o'clock p.m., and we call ourselves a prophetic deliverance ministry. And what that is is you can come, and the prophetic word is there. The word from God is there. We're located at 138 Rainbow Way in Fayetteville, Georgia, 30214. You can also follow the church on Facebook at Life on Family Worship Center. And you can follow me on my personal page. I put a lot of things up there on my personal page and inspirational quotes. I'm not one of those pastors that have to dress up to do Facebook Live or anything. I just, I tell people, I just, if I get up and get a word, you know, it may be a short little nugget, but, you know, it is what it is. And so I'll just come on oftentimes. But um, so f- Facebook at Marlon S. Thomas, um, IG at Bishop Marlon Thomas and um 
And then our website at lifelinefamilyworshipcenter.org as well. Listen, the podcast is coming, so you just got to taste the day. That's what you got. You yes, gotta taste. podcast is coming. And I'm going to tell y'all something. So I'm here talking to y'all, and Barbara got all this food spread it out on yes. this table. Uh, I can't wait to eat, but I got a couple more interviews before I eat. And so thank you again so much for, Bishop, thank for, you for spending some time me. and being here with us. And thank you, Barbara, again. Uh, I'll be right back with your next person, so stay tuned. <laughs> 